Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome back to Man vs Film. This is going to be a review for Shameless release of Torso. Now, I recently released another couple of their movies. One of them was uh, The Mountain of the Cannibal God, or Slave of the Cannibal God, which is directed by Sergio Martino, and I was really curious what else this guy had done. And there's a few more movies that he's released on this label that I was wanting to check out. So I dove into Torso, uh, another movie I'd never heard of, but it was on the landscape of Giallo's. It, it loomed large. It was one that was seemed to be mentioned rather a lot. So I was interested to check it out. And it's all about um, a university, a, a cosmopolitan university with lots of different nationalities there. And there seems to be these brutal murders happening to the co-eds. Uh, a, a particular plot that you've seen many times before, but with Martino's hands, uh, it raises the bar a little bit by creating a really seedy and sordid world around these girls. There is not a man in this movie that is not a lecherous pig who is constantly uh, just eyeing up women, treating them like meat, objectifying them. Every single man is a lust fueled baboon in this movie. And the women are, are almost sometimes aware of this, but sometimes just bumbling through this life. The objects for men to be uh, used. And again, it's with the colour. He is using those women in a different fashion from the rest of the men in the movie. He is brutally tearing them apart um, in various style in the movie. And that's what leads to a few... Uh, amazing kill sequences within this movie itself. We get the, the basic characters, we get our uh, slew of red herring different kinds of men. Which one of them is it going to be? Could be anyone. I'm pretty sure most of these Jalo movies they don't know themselves until they just draw the name out the hat at the end of it. This one has a little bit more foresight in it and the, the colour himself has a distinguished look about himself. It has a, a distinguishable look because it is a white balaclava, something that's really unusual. And in a lot of dark scenes that we get, you have this white balaclava there before the violence strikes. Now, we have a, a nice opening scene of a, a girl in a car that, whose boyfriend gets murdered off camera, which is a nice touch. Usually it's all in your face, so it shows that reserved side when you want that increases the suspense and the tension as the the young girl in the car is brutally tackled next and it's a movie that shows you these violent sequences you see the knife go in you see it cut to flesh and it looks real and violent and you know painful where there's a fantastic scene that's based in a swamp that leads from a kind of orgy type scenario where there is just lust field party there seems to be just people touching other people uh, this girl leaves the party uh, walks into a swamp and is hunted down by her killer there is mist there is barren trees it is really nicely shot at night and it just looks cinematic it has a very particular look about it that i really indeed myself upon the movie opens with a kind of blurred out uh, threesome going on in the background the movie's called torso but it's also called carnal violence which leads to a huge aspect of what the movie is like it is all about these the carnal nature of the movie the, the use of each other particularly men and the movie doesn't go at a brisk pace it takes its time and it doesn't feel slow at any point but it, it allows itself to breathe a little bit of time it allows to have these scenes of paranoia in the lead characters as they feel as if they're being you know, stalked or watched, which they usually are, before a friendly face jumps out and gives them a little fright. Now, this movie was pretty good. I was enjoying the way it just flowed and the characters it was setting up, the scenes that it had, how it was different murder scenes and how they were rather very visual, very interesting to see. And then it gets to the last 20 minutes of the movie where this really steps up a gear. We have a scenario where the killer knows that three girls have gone to this house um, outside a small village and he's going to kill the three people there. But unbeknownst to him, the lead character has also made the trip up there. Well, she is, is, has been put out, she's hurt her ankle, she's been put uh, a sleeping pill to, to go to sleep for a little while. She wakes up and goes down the stairs to find that her three friends have all been brutally murdered. And the murderer comes in and she's trapped in the room as he starts to dismember these bodies. And it becomes an almost silent, tense, suspense-filled sequence for about 20 minutes that had me on the edge of the seat. Just how fantastic this sequence was. You really don't know how it's going to play out and it feels very Hitchcockian. It, it 
teases, it shows you how these movies, Jalo, it can sometimes be said that they've, they've latched on to various other trends in the world and they've threw out a movie quickly, but sometimes when you get a really good director at the helm, they add more into it, there's a lot of care, there's a lot of uh, style and substance put into this to create that super tense sequence at the end, which is a standout in a movie that already had several other scenes that I really enjoyed. Torso for me uh, is one of the best sort of giallos that I've seen. I thought it was terrific. I liked the characters. I loved that sequence at the end. I liked the visual style of the movie, which was rather stunning. Some of the moral messages that came with the movie, not so much, but I did enjoy the movie very much. And I think this is worth picking up if you're into these kind of movies. Now, it does have one noticeable extra, and that is Disremembering Torso, which is a 27-minute interview with Sergio Martino. He was on the other disc that I reviewed as well, and he's just one of these characters that's fun to listen to. He has some nice stories, he has uh, some distance from his movies so he can be pragmatic about them and he is very intelligible and very nice to listen to. I think he's, he tells some good stories. This is the second time I've seen him in a disc talking about the making of a movie and both times I, I feel really um, connected with the guy as he's giving me his take on the movie. Nowadays, looking back, it's also got like a rebuild version of the movie where it does have some um, Italian sequences put into it, but to be honest, they're fairly seamless. There's a few moments here and there of subtitle before it goes back into English dub, and you know, I didn't even notice it. But I've got to say, Torso was a terrific movie. I really enjoyed it. It gave me some visual style, and again, the, the, the 20 minute sequence at the end of the movie is just absolutely jaw dropping. I'd love to know your opinion of the movie. If you've seen Torso, let me know in the comment box below your thoughts, and I'll see you next time on Man vs. Film.